Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I'm going to show you how to install this Delta Custom Reflection Series mirror in your bathroom. You'll have to check at your local big home improvement store, but Delta has this series which comes with several different sizes of mirrors, many different frame combinations, so you can mix and match to fit your space. Overall, the cost you're looking at is anywhere from about $80 to $120, depending on what kind of glass you get, what kind of frame you get, what kind of mount you get. But this one right here was about right at that $100 mark. So let's jump in and show you how to install this in your bathroom. First, get your height and width that you're dealing with. I have a 31 inch vanity, so that's the width I'm looking for. And then 50 total inches of clearance, so the mirror needs to fit within that space. So we have our measurements and now I'm at the home improvement store. Check with your local home improvement store and see if you have the Delta custom reflection display such as this, where you can pick your glass out, various different sizes, and then also each of the sizes come in either a standard or a deluxe. And then you have frames in multiple different colors, multiple different patterns, and then also the different sizes to fit the glass that you can pick out to make a number of different combinations, and then your mounting surface, whether it's gonna be flush or it's going to be a floating mount. The examples here on the left-hand side are this the deluxe glass with a frame, obviously cut in half, and a flush mount. That means with a frame, it will be flush. Without a frame, it will still have somewhat of a floating appearance. And then to the right-hand side is just standard glass, no frame, and then it does have the floating mount, so it, get, it pushes it off away from the surface a little bit more. For our project, what I went with is standard glass, 24 inches by 36 inches, a white frame that's 29 by 41 inches, and then the flush mount. Starting off, you'll take the glass out of the package and just set that off to the side, using the cardboard to set the frame on top of. With the frame facing down, so you'll have the channel facing up, you'll remove it from the box and then also remove these white clips, which are gonna hold in the glass. Take your glass facing the reflective surface down and then fit that within your frame. Once it's fit within your frame, then you're just gonna go around and screw in the four different pegs for the mounting. And then just tighten those down and then move on. Then moving on to these white clips, you'll place them all the way around the mirror, which will secure the mirror into the frame. All right, so now we're ready to place the mounting bracket here on the wall. And this is probably the most difficult part of the whole install. Now this mounting bracket is just a, a flat stock aluminum that has bent, uh, punched out holes and then also a bent rail. And that is where those pegs on the back of the mirror that we put in, that's where they'll ride. So the top two pegs are going to sit in this and that's what's gonna carry the load. So overall for my specific bathroom here, the two things that I'm looking out for is I have a hard to stop at the ceiling, right? I can't go past that, I can't have the mirror hitting that and not aligning to the mounting bracket. And then I have a hard stop uh, for the sidewall. So I'm going to need 14 inches of clearance coming down. So that's kind of a critical measurement that I'm looking for because I know the back pegs on the mirror that I got from Delta are 14 inches down from the end of the frame. And then I need eight inches of clearance off to the side. But the overall mirror is 29 inches wide. My vanity is 31. So technically, I want about nine inches of clearance coming off that wall so I can center everything up. This Delta Custom Reflection Series does have some movement once you mount it. It does have some side to side movement where you can center everything up. So starting off, what I want to do to see where is there a stud in the wall here? Because I want to hit at least one of these mounting screws into a stud. So I'm gonna use is this little stud buddy here. It just is a stud finder with magnets. So you just swipe it on the wall until you hear, feel it catch. And what that's doing is it's showing you a screw that's holding the drywall in. So that screw is marking a stud in the wall. 
Sudbay is awesome. You can get the electronic, a uh, ton of different stud finders. I like this one, it's super simple, no batteries, no, no issues. Uh, if you want to see this exact one I'm using, just look down in the description. And you'll see this, and you'll also see obviously all the links to the mirror. But what I'll do now is just go ahead and mark, just put some light marks on where that stud at so I can reference it for one of the mounting holes in the bracket. All right, so now putting the bracket roughly into place and aligning one of those mounting holes. I'm aligning one of the holes opposed to one of the slots. The slots are what you're going to use for the other two mounting screws, but if you can find a stud, you really want to align one of those holes, and it'll just give you a tighter fit. And then the kit does come with a small bubble level, which you can set in the middle on top of the, of the mounting rail, and then that's going to make sure that the, everything is level and ready to go. Alright, so now I need to find my 14 inches or make sure I at least have 14 inches of clearance. I'm gonna get a little bit on the top side, so I'm gonna go 15. So this is roughly where I need to be uh, for that top rail surface. Now what I also wanna do is make sure that this is level. So I'm gonna move that bubble in the middle, making sure everything is level. Okay, now that's good, I like that position. And what I'm going to do is just mark the bottom of this rail for reference. Because I know vertically I have my position down, but now I need to find left to right horizontally where my position is going to be. So remember, I'm looking for about nine inches, so I'm way too close to the wall now. So I'm going to move over basically one of those holes because I still want to mount that hole to the stud. So I'm going to see if that lines up, making sure everything is still level. That's much better. So now I got my nine inches of clearance and I like where that's at. I also have a hole that is lining up to the stud. So I'm going to mark that hole here. And that's the first screw I'm going to put in. I'm going to sink that screw, get this rail secured to the wall, make sure everything's level. And then I'm going to mark my two other holes in these slots. And that's where I'm going to put the additional actual drywall anchors and which will be the other two points of securing this rail. Now, if you have a drill or a compact nut driver, you can use that to sink the screw. I'm just going to do it with a Phillips screwdriver by hand, knowing that some of you guys might be in the same position. It's okay if your rail loses its spot while you sink the screw in because we're going to level everything out later on. Let's secure that screw down. If you secure it down quite a bit, then it'll really hold this bracket. And when you level it, it'll stay into place. All right. The only other thing I'm going to do is just double check my measurements. It's best to fix things now than to go much further and have to redo it later on. All right. I have 15 inches, so I've got my clearance to the top side. And then also I have at least nine inches closer I'm sorry, at least eight inches, closer to nine inches on my left to right horizontal. So I am good to go. And now I'm gonna mark my two other slots here that I'm gonna sink drywall anchors into. To be truthful, I'm not in love with these type of anchors. I'm not in love with any kind of plastic plug anchor for drywall. Uh, I'm going to use these. They come in the pack. I understand that you're probably going to use them as well, so I'll use them, but I would prefer a uh, toggle bolt. So if you want a secure, more secure hold, I would use toggle bolts. I'd drill this out and then pass the toggle bolt through it. Okay, now we'll go ahead and bring that bracket back up into place. Now we align to these slots because then that's going to give us a little play to make sure that everything is level. Okay, so that's centered up. Alright, so now our mounting bracket is 
installed. We have the two screws going through the anchors and then the one aligned to the set. Your combination is going to be a little different. It's going to just depend on where your mirror is going and then also where the studs are at in your wall. So the nice thing is once you have it in place, you do have additional side to side movement. So you have about an inch and a half that you'll be able to move it side to side. So that finishes up the install. And overall, as you saw, the mounting bracket is gonna be the toughest part to get installed. If you're having trouble with those drywall anchors, remember I talked about toggle bolts. Down in the description, I will give you the exact dimension and a link to some toggle bolts that will fit this mounting bracket. So if those anchors aren't holding for you or they're damaged or whatever, you can get these toggle bolts. They'll fit that mounting bracket and the, it'll just have a more secure hold. Before you take off, don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we have weekly videos coming out to help you around the house with your home repairs and improvements. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.